and welcome my to this session of learn extra live grade 10 science Hope you guys are ready you've got your pens pads out and you're gonna make some notes i'm tired and i've got tracy here who's gonna be taking us through today's session how are you doing tracy good and you i'm good i'm good good i'm glad it's almost holidays have to be honest yes i'm glad too but i'll be working so oh, i'm gonna feel sorry <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Moving so what are along. We doing today? today, we are doing physics revision. Okay. So grade 10, we're going to look at the stuff you've done this term. It's not the rest of the year's work. Just what you've done this term. We're basically just going to do problems mm -hmm. and hopefully help them with some problem solving and how to answer exam questions. And stuff. All right. That's awesome. Cool. So while well, you make your way across the board, Kay. mindset is you know the drill. You need to get on the page, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra talk to me let me know what you guys are thinking if you lost any if you need help post on the page because we can't read your mind through the screen so what you need in front of you make sure that you have your phone your books your pen so you can make notes and to make sure that you talk to us on the facebook page or if you've got a laptop then you can just do that but i also want to let you know that guys i've got this awesome casio calculator and this labeler to give away but just because it's a special day today, guess what else I'm going to be putting? I bet you can't even guess. Yes, 14 megapixel Casio camera. You better be posting in. Like, we've got a question that's going to come up later in the show. So, guys, make sure that your eyes are peeled so you can get this awesome, awesome Casio camera. It's, it's, I really wanted one, you know? So I was just thinking of maybe just, but I really can't do that because it's against the rules, you know, those kinds of things. But anyway, moving right along, make sure you guys talk to us, get on the page, let us know what you guys are thinking. But for now, I want to say thank you to Liberty and hand it over to Tracy. Tracy, take it away. Oh, thank you, Ty. I also wouldn't mind the camera. So um, anyway, so guys, what are we looking for today? What are we actually looking at? Well, we're going to look at vectors and scalars, we're going to look at graphs of motion, and we're going to look at equations of motion. Now, obviously, I think you guys realize there's no way we can go and recap absolutely everything you've done. So I've picked out some questions, we've got some stuff to look at, and we'll take it as it comes. Like Ty said, please make sure you um, post on the page for your questions, and also be specific with your questions, okay? Don't just go and understand graphs, okay? I can't help you with that. So. I need specific, specific questions, all right? But in order to win the Casio calculator, uh, not the calculator, the camera. camera. See, I don't want them. Yes, I do want you to win the <laughs> camera. This is your question. So listen carefully. We're not going to put it up on the screen. I need you to listen, okay? What I need from you is you need to be able to give me a situation, and it is a genuine situation, okay? This can happen where an object can have constant speed but not constant velocity or acceleration, okay? Constant speed but not constant velocity and acceleration. There's more than one correct answer to this, great tens. Okay, but you need to be able to describe the situation to us as to what that is. This is a little tricky, but this really is going to see whether you understand vectors and scalars. Okay, so I want to know a situation where an object has a constant speed or can have a constant speed, but does not have constant velocity and acceleration. Okay, you guys got that? Brilliant, all right? So... Let's jump right into vectors and scalars and see how we go. All right. We're going to draw arrows, vector arrows representing the following quantities. Guys, you may or may not be asked to do this accurately. I, accurately for me gets a little tricky with length, okay, with the board, but I can do an accurate angle. So that's what I am going to do for you so you can see. And we are going to talk about what would happen if we do this to a scale diagram. So we have an aeroplane which flies 800 meters at a bearing of 60 degrees. Depending on your paper, you choose an appropriate scale. So something like one centimeter is 100 meters, for example, and then you'd have an eight centimeter line. That's a nice scale because you don't want your, your scale diagram to be yay big, so like tiny, tiny, tiny. The, the larger your scale, in other words, the bigger your diagram becomes, the more accurate 
your answer is, okay? And that's obviously what we're looking for. And remember, when you draw these diagrams, you look straight over your page, look straight over your ruler, make sure you've got a ruler that you can see all the markings on, make sure it's accurate, okay? So, 800 meters on a bearing of 60 degrees, which means we need to measure it from north. First thing I need in my diagram is I need to know where north is, okay? Very important. I know that sounds a bit silly, but I need to make sure you know where north is. Next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to measure the bearing. So we draw in a set of axes, okay? So let's put there, and we need that one. What's important is that these are 90 degrees to each other. This is our set of axes. And then I'm going to need to measure from north. This is my, ooh, no, there we go. This is my north line. Okay, that's north. So I'm going to need to measure from there. So let's use, and um, guys, I am using this for the first time. We had a bit of hilar hilarity um, before the show with me trying to use this thing. So, okay, there we go. Now, this is what most of you would do. You go, okay, there's my, my comfort, my protractor. Cool. Let's measure 60 degrees. What have I done wrong? First of all, zero is on the horizontal line, which we can't do because that's not how it works. So... I have to move it so that zero is on my north line, okay? I'm now going to see where 60 degrees is, and we look and we go, bearing 60 degrees, there's north, and there's my 60. Okay, that is not it. Let's do it this way. You can't press on this one. There's 60 degrees. Okay, right for me. It's always important to talk to your equipment. Okay, it's a bit of a long line, but sorry, I'm, I'm using this one for the first time. So let's get rid of that. Now, that means that my vector goes from here to there, and I would actually probably have to draw it to about there, depending on the length of my line. So it actually goes to the top of that. There's my vector, okay? But we're not done, because now we go... 60 degrees, 800 meters, okay? So I've done it to scale. That would be, say, an 8-centimeter line. Probably, actually, that wouldn't fit at an angle on your page, so you probably make it, say, um, 1 centimeter is 200, me is 200 meters, which means your line's 4 centimeters long. I've got my bearing at 60 degrees, and I've got the 800 meters. We're happy with the arrow showing the direction, okay? Next one's won't take so long. A cyclist rides at 30 kilometers per hour westwards. Okay, well, let's do our north-south lines. Okay, let's do it with those. Oh, man. Lots of extra lines. Try not to do that. Very, very not nice. Okay, because that makes sense. So there we go. There's north. It is going westwards. So we go north, south, east, west. West is in this direction. So it starts from there, it'd probably be a fairly short line, and we go, well, that's 30 kilometers per hour. I don't need to write in the direction now or you, or, or um, angle because it's westwards and I've got my north-south lines, okay? We would need to try and make it so this is a little bit more on my, there we go. Oh, no, come on. Ooh, now it's really going all over. There we go. That's a much better line because it's on top of them, Okay. You guys sticking with me? Good, we've got another one. A boy applies a force of 75 newtons to the right. Be careful here. The last two questions had to do with north, south, east, west, compass bearing directions, so we needed north lines. This just says 75 newtons to the right. So it's really important that you know your right hand from your left hand. One of my kids showed me, I used to remember it as, well, I actually normally wear my watch on my right hand, even though I'm right-handed, and but I can't with a board because it interferes with the board. But one one of my kids um, actually told me, well, if you do that with your left hand, it makes an L when you look at it. Okay, so your left hand makes an L. Make sure you know it, which means your right hand goes on the other side. And all we need to do is, there we go, it goes to the right. There we go. I think that's... I don't think it's completely horizontal, but it's okay. 70 newtons, 75 newtons. To scale, 
one centimeter is 25 newtons, maybe it makes it three centimeters long. You don't want to make it something like one centimeter equals five newtons because then this would be 15 centimeters long. That's ridiculous. Okay, it gets a bit big. So just be careful with those ones. Okay, but we all know we would never just ask you to draw them like this. We're going to ask you to add vectors together. So let's look at that. Next question. Use vector diagrams and calculations to find the following resultant displacements. Cool. A cricket ball is bowled 20 meters towards the batsman and is hit back 60 meters to the boundary. Now, we could do this by an accurate diagram if we wanted to, but let's just really go through what they're saying. I'm going to do it horizontal because that's what normally what I do, but if you do it up and down, it doesn't actually matter because I didn't tell you which way it's going, except that it's going towards the batsman and then away from the batsman. Okay? And it's hit back 60 meters. So please understand what we're saying to you is the ball comes towards me as a batsman, if I was the batsman, I then hit the ball and it goes back from me in the opposite direction, and of course we're assuming it's all in a straight line. So, let's look at what we've got. We've got, it's hit 20 newtons in one direction, so that's 20 newtons, 20 meters, sorry. Then, it is hit backwards at, well, for 60 meters, the resultant the resultant is the vector from the start to the finish. So let's do this with another. I'm going to do it in another color so that it's easier to see. Let's do it. There we go. Okay, that didn't actually help me. I'll change it now. Let's do it here. And I think all I did was change. No. There we go. Okay. Cool. So... There's my resultant. Okay, beginning to end. We can all go 60 minus 20, 40 meters. Okay, but, all right, the point here is that you can't leave it like this. That doesn't, I've got the value, okay, I've got it in a diagram, but I need to know that you understand what that resultant is. So now you write it in words for me, and you say the resultant, okay, equals 40 meters, I don't know why it's doing that, 40 meters away from, the board has a dark spot, from the batsman. Okay, the board really doesn't want to play over that side. Anyway, so it goes 40 meters away from the batsman. Guys, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot describe this to me as being right, left, up, down, north, south, east, west. Nowhere in this question did I do that. Okay, so in the question, we did not give you any sort of direction that says north, south, east, west. So you cannot answer like that. Okay, for me, I pic when I picture this in my head, I see the ball going right, then I see it going left. But that's the way I think. And also, I think it's because in our Western society, we read from right. Okay, we, re re sorry, we read left to right. So I tend to draw my diagrams left to right because that's how I read. But you don't have to. So it's a very personal thing here. So be careful. This becomes the tricky part when we now need to do it as a calculation, okay? So watch how we set this out. We're going to say that towards the batsman is positive. You don't have to. Okay, I'm saying it's plus. You don't have to. You can choose any direction you like. I think the most logical thing to do is to always choose the original direction as positive. 
Choose your original direction as positive. Make sure life a lot easier. Plus then you don't have to keep thinking, oh, which one should I choose? Original, which means my first displacement, okay, my first displacement is 20 meters and it's positive. My second displacement is minus 60. Now it's minus 60 because it's going away from the batsman. Okay? That wasn't the question, though. The question is, what is the resultant? So, we want my resultant displacement, and that's going to be displacement 1 plus displacement 2. So we go 2 plus minus 16, and we get minus 40. Now, most of you go, yeah, we've got minus 40. That means it goes away from the batsman. what we've got in the diagram. Perfect. But we never, in a vector question, leave this answer as negative. Never, never, never. We need to turn it into a positive answer and give the direction in words. So we're going to go, well, that means this is actually 40 meters away from the batsman. There, oh, there's a big spot on the screen that's not working. Okay, batsman. Guys, please don't just say away because it could be away from the bowler. It could be away from the boundary. Be specific. Okay? I'm hoping you got that. Ty, I think we're going to go for a break. All and right. then we're going to do a graph. And are they posting on the page? Are they giving us answers? I'm scanning. I'm scanning. This is rolling in slowly. Rolling. I like it. <laughs> Keep coming. All mm. right. Okay. So mindset is, you heard Tracy, make sure you do not disappear. Make sure you come back and you're paying attention. Because we're going to have this question because we need to give away this awesome, ca this awesome Casio. You know, I was about to call it a thing. And I was like, wow, I'm no, getting old. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, ca a camera. It's mm. a camera. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. We'll see you after this break. <laughs> And welcome back, Mindsetters. Hope you had a nice little break there. You went to do whatever you had to do, like I always say. But now you're back. You're ready. You've got your pens, pads out, and you're going to make some notes. As you can see, this awesome arrangement that I've just made here. It's got the calculator. You know, you've got the camera. Then you've got the labeler. So, guys, this is all stuff up for grabs. So make sure you get on the po the po the page. The page <laughs> and get posting. <laughs> you see, it was post and page put together. Anyway, yes. so make sure you keep talking to me on the page. Let me know what you guys are thinking. And... Don't worry, Tracy's going to repeat the question, so we still have another shot, so make sure you're paying attention. And write it down. It helps. But on that note, Tracy, take it away. Thanks, Ty. Um, you need to keep drinking your tea. Yes, yeah, poach. It's not working so I'm well. not sure where anyway. that came from. Okay, <laughs> guys, let me repeat your, your challenge question in order to get that really, really awesome camera, okay? I need you to give me a situation where an object is moving at constant speed but does not have constant acceleration and velocity, okay? Constant speed, but changing acceleration and velocity, okay? Constant speed, change in velocity and acceleration. I need a situation where that is possible, okay? So get your little mind, let, get your, what's it, your thinking caps on, okay? So... Let's get to the part of the section that you really, really don't like. Graphs of motion. Okay, so, and I did pick a doozy of a graph, which will really get us going. So it says to us that the motion of an object is represented by the following velocity time graph. Now, unfortunately, the, the, the writing's a bit small, but that's okay. We have velocity in meters per second on our y-axis, goes from minus 10 to 15. On the x-axis, this is time in seconds, and it goes up in single seconds. So we have a section from A to B, then B to C, then C to D, D to E, F, E to F. Great. Now it says, describe the motion of the object during the nine seconds shown on the graph. In a test or an exam, this would be worth quite a few marks because there's actually one, two, three, four, five different sections to the graph, five times that the acceleration or the velocity changes, okay? So I need to know what's happening at 
each of those points. 10 marks, okay, easy, easy. So, first of all, we're going to look at this first section from A to B. So, for the first two seconds, we realize that the object, whatever it is, started at a velocity of 10 meters per second, and it is accept constant acceleration because we don't have non-constant acceleration, all right, and it's a straight line, so it has to be constant acceleration. It accelerates for two seconds until it reaches a velocity of 15 meters per second. That's the first description, okay? Then, <coughs> from B to C, velocity doesn't change. It's not stationary, because it's not on the x-axis. It is going at 15 meters per second, which means it has constant velocity for the next three seconds, okay, from B to C, constant velocity. Then, from C to D, watch what happens. It goes from 15 to zero. 15 to zero. It is now slowing down. It has negative acceleration, and it's going from 15 meters per second till it stops in one second. Now, this bottom part, for the next two seconds, it goes from zero <coughs> to minus 10. It has changed direction. All this positive, this is the top part of the graph, this is the positive direction. So if this was like a car, we, what we're saying is the car moved forward, <coughs> it stopped, it, turn, <coughs> it would turn around, or <coughs> it's now going in reverse. Okay, it's reversing till it reaches a velocity of minus 10. It is still a negative accelerating. It's accelerating in the opposite direction, okay? Then in the last second from, one t from eight to nine seconds, it slows down again, still going backwards, and it slows down till it stops. So they put in the foot on the accelerator, reversing, and then they take the foot off and put it on the brake, and they stop. Okay. That's a lot of work for a few marks, eh? But that's okay. Now, we go to the next part. From the graph. From the graph. What, I am, what am I saying to you, grade tens? I'm saying to you, you may not use equations of motion. Okay, yes, I have enough information to use equations of motion, but I am saying to you, because I said to you, use the graph from the graph. I want you to look at the graph and use the graph. Determine the acceleration between A and B. It is a velocity time graph, and we remember, we say to ourselves, okay, from a velocity time graph, I can calculate both displacement and acceleration. So we go, okay, Acceleration is the gradient of the graph. Displacement is the area under the graph. So, from A to B, there's point A, there's point B. Now, of course, the layout here becomes quite interesting because you go, oh, wait, 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 in maths, gradient is an M. Let's use an M. Uh, it means nothing to us, okay? Be careful. Also, this is a really good tip for you for when you get to matric, okay? We don't care about the mass equation. This is not an x, y graph, grade tens. Do not use y1 minus, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. This is not that type of graph, okay? Your axes are called v and t, so I need to be using that. Now, we know we need to work out the gradient, so the way we do this is we go. The acceleration is going to be equal to the gradient, of the graph. Okay? Now let's make it really simple for ourselves. And gradient is rise over run. So that means I'm going to take the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Big, oh, I have such a big, big begging thing to do now. Can you go backwards in time? No, as much as we would like to, particularly to correct English sometimes. Really? I mean, are you going to take that low blow? I am. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, no, we, no, we love him anyway. So the point is, 
We would love to go back in time, but we can't, which means you cannot get, don't ever get negative time. That also means for us on this graph, we're going to go final minus initial. We're going to go 15 minus 10 and 2 minus 0. So we're going to go 15 minus 10, 2 minus 0, which means we get 5 divided by 2, and that gives us an acceleration of 2.5. Uh, sorry, let's do th write that somewhere where you can actually read it, shall I? Oh, boy. Sorry, we do have a little bit of an issue with the board at the moment, but it's okay. I'll eventually learn to write where you can see it. Okay, meters per second squared, that's enough. Next part. Now, we could be really mean and make you, in fact, when I did this question originally, I was like, oh, we can make, we have five different sets of acceleration from A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, E to F. I can make you work them all out if I really wanted to, but I'm not being that mean today. Okay, acceleration between C and D, yeah, C and D. I'm hoping you realize I could ask you to find the acceleration between B and C, but that would be silly because it's zero. Okay, so you're going to 15 minus zero, uh, 15, so it's zero divided by three, it's zero. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, so between C and D, we go fine. It's a gradient question. Okay, and we go, okay, acceleration equals gradient, okay, which means we're going to do delta V over delta T. Let's go back to the graph. Starts at 15, so that's 15, ends at 0. So we're going to go 0 minus 15. Time, it starts at 5, ends at 6. 6 minus 5. So that means for us that we have minus 15 over 1. So it's negative 15 meters per second squared. That's fine. When we did the description, we said, well, it's a negative acceleration because it's slowing down. Okay? It's accelerating in the opposite direction to its motion. And you've got to think about it in this sense. In order to stop it, if it's a car, for example, the, we need to put brakes on. Brakes oppose the motion, okay? It can't slow down if the acceleration is in the same direction. So it has to be in the opposite direction. Otherwise, it doesn't slow down. You guys okay with that? Now, for the next question, you need to read it very, very carefully. Determine the distance covered by the object during the nine seconds. Distance is a scalar. Distance is a scalar. I do not care which direction it goes in. Distance is the area under the graph. So it's this whole area plus this whole area. Now, we've actually been really nice. This has sort of been split up. Now we go back and we realize, oh, I don't know the equation for working out the area of a square or a triangle, and it's okay, don't stress. You need to learn them. We'll go through it. You are welcome to learn the formula for finding the area of a rhombus if you really want to, but then it's another formula to learn. So you know what? Every single one of these graphs can be split up into triangles and squares. If I take a line and I go here and I go, okay, there we go, it's a triangle. Triangle, rectangle, rectangle, triangle, triangle. I have five things. So let's call this area one, area two, area three, area four, area five, okay? So um, my distance equals area under the graph. So that means it's going to be 
area one, oops, sorry, plus area two plus area three plus area four plus, okay, I ran out of space, area five. Okay, that's a five, not an S. There we go. Area one, we go back to the graph, is a triangle. So that's a half base times height. Area two was a square, so that's length times breadth. Area three was a square, length times breadth. Area four was a triangle. And area five was a triangle. Okay, so area one, go back to it. Base is from naught to two. Okay, my height is 10 minus 15 minus 10, so it's five. So um, my base we said was two. My height was five. Okay, my first area for number two is two times 10. Okay, for my next one it was, um, sorry, five minus two, which is three. Okay, I'm just doing this because I don't want to go through my dead spots on my board. So it's three times 15. This one was one because it took one second and height is 15. And my last one is three seconds and it goes to minus 10, but it's distance, so I don't care. This is the big thing, okay? This is distance. I could care less about the minus. Very, very important. So I have a half times two times five, which is five plus 20 plus 45 plus a half times one times 15, which is seven and a half plus three times a half is one and a half times 10, which is 15. Okay. And then we take out our calculators and we would work this out. So we've got 5 plus 20, which is 25. So I'm just going to check my answer because I don't always trust my math. 20, okay, 5 plus 20, 25 plus 45 is 70 plus, uh, we're just going to tell you what the answer is. It's just easier. Okay, 92,5 meters. That's cool. We're okay with that. Look at the next question. Now you're going to, oh, but it's the same question, Tracy. No, it's not. Displacement. Displacement. This is what I need you to see. This last area here, that is where the change comes in. So on that last area over here, my height is actually minus 10. Okay, my height is minus 10. It is going in the opposite direction. So for the first six seconds, we're going in one direction, then it turned around and came back. Distance doesn't care about the path. Distance is the physical length that you travel. Displacement does. Displacement needs direction. So if we go back here, okay, what the, the only thing I would change is in here, I would make that minus 10 now. So instead of having a plus here, that becomes minus 15. And instead of 92, this is now 62,5 meters forward or in front. So it's going into the dead spot. Okay. Displacement, direction, very, very, very important. Okay. I asked this deliberately because I needed you to see that with the graph when it goes underneath okay all right so great tens I'm hoping that we have some answers on the page which we're going to have a look at and I think it's time for a break and then we're going to do equations of motion all right yes you know what, I almost have to like kind of take this and just do this because my computer's about to explode. Oh, really? Have we got lots page. of answers coming? <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. I love it, Great Tens. Keep so going. Great Tens, make sure you keep on posting, keep on talking to us, and you can win these awesome prizes, cast your calculator, this awesome camera, and this labeler. So make sure you keep on talking to us. But for now, we'll see you after this break.
And welcome back, Mindsetters. Hope you had a nice little break there. Now you're back, you're ready, you're paying attention. And guys, I just want to say I'm loving what's happening on the page. Keep on posting, keep on sending in those messages, keep on sending in what you guys think is the answer. Because you can win this awesome, awesome digital camera. Like, it's, it's, it's really cool. Like, it comes with an adapter, it comes with power cable, USB, CD kind of stuff. Like, you know, it's, it's you just know you're have to super cool. With the I know, like, uh, it's even, I'm struggling to release it from my grip to put it back down. But anyway, mindset is, <laughs> that means that you guys can take this from me. So make sure you keep on posting on the page, let us know what you guys are thinking, keep going. One of you might just get this, so, let me know. But then, yeah, you still get these awesome other prizes, don't forget, there's still a calculator and a labeler to win, so keep on posting anyway. But for now, this is where I hand it over to Tracy. Tracy, take it away. Yeah, guys, I promise great things, I will wrestle Ty for the camera so that the winner gets it. Okay, I promise. Nah, sorry, Ty. <laughs> anyway. It's fine. We are now going to jump right into equations of motion. Just before the end of the show, I will tell you what the answer is to the question, but I'm loving what's coming up. I had a quick look at the page, and I'm really loving the way you guys are thinking about it. It's brilliant. I think you're really getting the idea of that question. So well done, guys. Keep going. So, equations of motion... We need to get this done. Guys, I'm going to show you how to work through these. So it says to you, a bike moving from rest. Rest means that if I start here and I go, that means initial velocity is zero. Now, I always start to write a list. Accelerates uniformly. Okay, so it's going to get to some sort of final velocity. Acceleration is five meters per second squared. I'm assuming that's in the same direction, for five seconds, okay, and we don't know delta x, okay, great teens, please write yourself a list, you don't get any marks for it, but I know for me, sometimes you just look at the question and there's just so much writing, and you forget what they've told you. So it becomes a real issue. So what I was doing now when I was going rest, underline things, second, five seconds, okay, accelerates uniformly. That's a good thing because if the acceleration changes, you have to do separate questions, okay, separate calculations. So we're actually quite happy with that. And the first thing they ask us to do is calculate final velocity. That would be VF. Now, the biggest ish question I get all the time is, how do I know which equation to use? Well, if you don't know the equations, which I think is a bit of a problem, but I understand it happens, you should be given an information sheet, which will have the four equations on it. Then, guys, you go through them one by one, and as you get to, so for example, let's use, this is one of the equations, um, delta V equals VI delta t plus a half a delta t squared. Okay, now you go, all right, first of all, I don't have delta x, I have vi, I have t, I have a, and I have t, that's great, but I want vf. This equation doesn't help me, doesn't have vf in it. Look at this equation. Vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. Okay, brilliant. So now we go, okay, cool. I want vf. Brilliant. It's okay with the square. I have vi. I have a. Don't have delta x. Two unknowns, useless equation for us. Do you see what I'm doing? This is what you need to do. Don't do it on your answer sheet. Do it on your information sheet, okay? Until you're ca happy and familiar with the equations, this is what you do. I've been doing this for so long, I don't even have to think about it twice anymore, but I've been doing it for a long time, okay? And it was actually one of the sections when I was at school that I really, really enjoyed. I know it's a bit strange, I'm sorry, but I really, really love physics, so it's one of those things. So, final velocity, that actually leaves us with one equation that actually makes sense for us, and that is the one that says Vf equals Vi plus a delta t. And we go, okay, cool. So, we'll extend the page. There we go. So, Vf is what I'm looking for. Brilliant. Vi was naught. 
A was five, T was five, and we go naught plus five times five is 25. That gives me an answer of 25. 25 meters per second. Don't forget your units. Make sure you use the right units. And then what I like to do, because, you know, often I'm gonna, we're going to get asked to do a question, and then you're going to need to use that answer somewhere else, and you forget that you've done it, so you don't know where it is. So I write it into my, li my list, and I'll actually underline it to remind me that this is something I had to work out. If I can avoid using that to answer another question, that's what we're going to do. Simply because if that answer's wrong, then any equation I use it in will also be wrong. So we want to avoid carry down errors. It just makes life difficult. So the next question was to calculate the displacement. Now remember what we did here. I can use this equation. Delta x equals vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared has no vf in it. I could, if I wanted to, use the second equation, but then, you know what, I don't want to do that because then I have to manipulate and to take things over. And in a test run exam, what happens? You get all nervous and you get shaken and all of a sudden your maths ability just jumps out the window, okay, and you forget how to do it. So let's make it easier. Delta x equals vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared. Okay, so we're going to use delta x equals vi, so delta t plus a half a delta t squared. We don't know delta x. vi is 0, t is 5. So this is a half. Acceleration was 5. t is also 5, and that's 5 squared. So we would put that in our calculators, though we do realize 0 times 5 is 0. Brilliant. So we have a half times 5 times 5. Okay, I'll show you. So what we've got is we've got 0 0.5 times 5 times 5 squared, 62,5. Done. Sorted. Not so bad. Hey, let's do another one. A car. Is, and they love questions like this. Cars approaching traffic lights at 24 meters per second. Is traveling at VI? Okay. Let's just write a list of what information we may or may not be given. Because these are, this is all the stuff we have in the equations. The lights change from green to amber. That's orange, Okay when the car is 20 meters away. So it's probably going to be the displacement. So let's put 20. With what acceleration? There we go. With what? I put a question mark there. Must he come to rest? What are they saying to us? Final velocity is zero. And, 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 let's quickly... Um, highlight this, and, and, second part to the question, might not be a second number, but it's there, and, how long does he take? So we want time. Start with what the first question was, what is his acceleration? So we look at this and we go, okay, I've got VI, I've got VF, I don't have time, so I, don't, I can't use delta X equals VI, delta T plus a half A, delta T squared, don't know T. Let's use VF squared, okay? I'm also just saving us some time because we're rapidly coming to the end of the show. Now, it's a substitution issue. So we go, okay, VF is zero. Guys, you can't leave it out. Also, please don't leave it blank because it's zero. A lot of times what I see is you start doing the substitution and you just leave it. Oh, I can't. Yes, I can use this. And you leave it blank because it's zero, Zero means something. Please don't leave a blank. VI, they said, we said, was 24 plus 2. Ooh. Okay, I, I want A, and this is 20. Okay, so we've got 0. 24 squared, I have actually worked this out, is 576 plus 40A. 
We're going to take the 40 over, so it's minus 40A equals 576. So we divide by minus, four, by minus 40, and we get minus 14,4 meters per second squared. Leave the minus. The minus is telling me that it is getting slower. Negative acceleration. Okay? Uh, let's do it in another color. So that's minus 14,4 meters per second squared. And now they want to know how long it takes to get there. Let's use an easy equation. I don't like ones with squares and stuff in it if I can avoid it at all. Let's use this equation. There's, you could still use delta x equals vi plus v, um, vf divided by 2 times delta t. I just don't like that equation at all because often you use it in the wrong place. So that's 0. It started at, let's have a look, 24, big NB minus 14,4. Guys, don't leave the minus out. So if I take it over, it gives me 14,4 times delta T equals 24. Okay, so delta T, we divide both sides by 14,4, and I have also worked this out, 1,67 seconds, less than 2 seconds, okay? This is why speed kills, because it takes, two, because it takes us so long to accelerate, decelerate. Okay, so I think time, it's time to give them the answer. I think that would be a good idea. I think so, because we're about to run out of time. We've done lots of equations in motion. We could do this all day. We could, actually. But we choose not to. We choose not to. Though <laughs> that's the whole way you learn this, is you go get find as many <laughs> questions as possible. Okay, now, for the equation, I, question, I said to you, give me a situation where an object can have constant speed, but change in acceleration and velocity. I'm so glad there were a lot of you that said when an object moves in a circle. Well done. It has to be work moving in a perfect circle, okay? Perfect circle cannot be an oval, okay? There must be no moment in time where the next second, for example, it's still going in the same direction because remember when an object goes in a circle, okay, the speed, we could care less about the speed, about the direction, but Every time it goes around something, the velocity is changing because its direction is changing, which then means it's accelerating. Okay, there is a change in direction which causes this acceleration. So a good example, besides just an object in general, are those wonderful Olympic <laughs> athletes who ride in circles on the bicycle tracks. Oh, yes. Because mm. those are perfect circles. Well, some of them. Yeah, the some ones of them that use it. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, they have dips this way, but they're actually perf they are mm. completely round. They have to be. That's how they get the speeds they get, which I think is just insane. But I'm a bit of a wuss, so I'm okay with that. All right. So, guys, well done to the winner. We do have one. Ty will be contacting you. Well done. I'm so impressed. I think they did great today. All and that's right. me done. Yes, that is you done. So, mindset is, oh, I'm glad to see what happened on the page. Guys, you know, we should give away cameras more often because like, my page almost crashed a couple of times. Gets, them, it gets their attention, hey? Yeah. I love it. But anyway, mindset is make sure you keep on using the page. Talk to us. Let us know what you guys are thinking. Don't just use it because we're giving away prizes. Come on. That's not cool. Come on. Come on. But anyway, mindset is keep talking to each other. Use the page for, for, for a reference point. But I just want to say a quick thank you to Liberty. Thank you for sponsoring the show. And yes, I'll be giving away this camera to the winner. Awesome stuff. Thank you, guys. Make sure you keep on using the pages I'm saying. And tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend to tell their friends to tell all their friends to get on the page and get chatting to us so this can be just a lot more fun. But for me, as Ty, this is where I sign off and say thanks and see you next time. Cheers.